This is a DIY flex bend sensor. It bends and it outputs a voltage that is variable. So you have in your, uh, your worksheets for project one, you have a diagram of how to make this and this is a tutorial explanation of how you make it. <clears throat> so the, the first DIY sensor you made was a digital switch on off. This one is analog. And if you remember from second year, you learned about analog versus digital using the potentiometer. So the potentiometer is just a dial that goes from 0 to 1023. When you, when you programmed it in Arduino, you would get a range of numbers. So imagine your speakers, your, uh, your amplifier at home on your sound system. Your volume can be set in a range from 0 to 10. So you can have the volume going up and down. That's what we mean by analog. There's, there's a range, there's a minimum number, and a maximum number. So this flex sensor, you're going to be able to use it to program it to do different things, to make sounds, to make visuals, whatever. But by bending it, it's going to give you a range of numbers. There's going to be a minimum number and a maximum number. Okay. So that's the whole concept of analog. And there's all kinds of things you can do with analog. Okay, so the materials. It's really simple to make. We're using some Velostat, which you know by now because you've made uh, your first sensor out of Velostat. And remember that Velostat is sort of semiconductive. It's this weird property where some electrons go through the material and some don't. And that's what gives us the bendy sensor. Okay, so we've got Velostat. We've also got um, conductive materials. The example I'm showing you here, I've got conductive fabric is the material I made it out of. So I've got two pieces of conductive fabric. And remember that the fabric I'm using is white on the background, so it means that that white background is not conductive. Okay, so basically the conductive contact should go on the velostat, and then this one the conductive part would have to touch the velostat as well. And you end up with something like that. Okay. Now, you can experiment with other conductive materials to make these flex sensors. I've made them with conductive thread. I've made them with copper tape, conductive copper tape. I've made them with, um, it's hard to see here, but I've got wire wrap. This is the uh, wire wrapping wire, which you know how to use, or you should know how to use by now. Um, and I stripped off the plastic, and there's a thin wire there that could be used. So any conductive material is going to work. Probably the easiest one to start with would be this kind of configuration. Two pieces of conductive fabric, one piece of Velostat. And then on this one, it's hard to see because it's transparent, but I use this uh, packing tape. So the whole thing is taped up. So if you look a bit closer you can kind of see that there's packing tape holding the whole thing together. You can use any kind of tape. You can use electrical tape, you can use scotch tape, you can try any, you know, duct tape, anything will, will work and you'll have to experiment with the materials. Okay, so it's really simple this would work. All I would have to do is tape it together to end up with something that looks like this. So that, that's the finished flex sensor and then the next step would be how do you use it? How do you run the electricity through it? Okay, so we'll get into that next. Here's the setup I'm using for the, the Bend Flex Sensor. I've got an Arduino plugged into my computer and you can see that I've got um, a red wire in 5 volts and a black wire that is in the ground pin and they're running to the breadboard. And then the yellow wire we'll talk about uh, in a minute. It's going into the analog zero pin on the Arduino. So it's running 5 volts plugged into a breadboard. So remember that the breadboard has 
rails that run in this direction. So five volts of power is running along that red rail. So anytime you plug a wire into that red rail, you're getting five volts and you're getting ground anytime you plug into that blue rail. Okay, just a quick refresher on how breadboards work. And then on these ones, you can see that ground is plugged in here. So it means all these pins running in this direction are gonna be, uh, are gonna have whatever they're plugged into. Okay, so, all right, that's the setup for the flex sensor. If we zoom in on the breadboard, you can see where the 10K ohm resistor is. Okay, so um, building your circuit, it's, it might be a bit confusing, but uh, there will be a diagram to follow to build this circuit. Okay, so the 10K ohm resistor, um, you have to measure the resistor with the multimeter, of course, and we'll do that in a second. But that's what the setup looks like on the breadboard. So we want to measure the uh, 10K ohm resistor because you want to be double sure that you've got the right resistor. So if you look at the settings, right, I've got the symbol for ohms here and I've got it set to 20K because the size of our resistor is uh, 10,000 ohms, 10K ohms, and we're going to read up to 20K. It's going to work. That tells us we're in the right range. Okay. In your kit, you probably have something like that. You can see that the, the packaging says 10K. You're probably going to be pretty safe if you pull out the 10K ohm resistor and put it in your circuit. But in no time, you're going to have like resistors all over the place in your kit. And you're going to go, wait, I can't remember what size it is. Because the resistors have a system, they have colored bands on them. But learning that colored band system, if you can do that, it's great. But I think it's a lot easier just to measure, okay? And remember that when you measure a resistor, you want to put your th fingers right on top of that because if you just touch it there, it's not going to work. You got to really push the wire right onto the probes like that, okay? So when I do that, it's saying, hey, 9.73 thousand ohms. So that's it. I mean, that's 10K. None of these things are exactly right on 10, you know, it's 9.7. It's all good. It's going to work. So that's how you measure uh, resistors. So you have to know the range. Okay, so if I put it to 200K, it's not going to measure because it's going to be out of range. Right? It's not an accurate measurement. Well, actually it is, but if I put it here, see, nothing happens. 2K, nothing happens. Well, yeah, nothing happens. 20K, I'm in the right range. Yeah, I get 9.8. And actually it does work at 200K as well. So that's good to know. But you can see the range changed. It put a zero in front. So 9.8, zero 9.8. So it did change, but if you know, uh, if you learn the decimal system in school in grade five, you'll be good. So I have the uh, multimeter set to 20 volts direct current. Because I want to measure the voltage coming out of the flex sensor. So I've got the uh, multimeter probes plugged into an alligator clip which is going to the five volts that is on the breadboard. So the power and ground, they're attached to the alligator clips. The flex sensor has power and ground. Power is on one of the uh, pieces of conductive fabric and the ground is on the other. And let's see if it works. So when I bend, I change voltage. So my minimum is around 0.85 volts, and then it goes up to 2.6 volts. So I've got a minimum and a maximum. And this might be used, for example, if you wanted to do um, a glove application. Let's say you want to bend your fingers, 
and play sounds or whatever, or have whatever interaction you want from this, the flex sensor, basically you could attach it to a glove and you could bend and you would get an analog range of voltages. So you get a voltage change when you bend and then that be can become screen content. You can output it as visuals, you can output it as content, you can output it as uh, audio, changing you know sounds or volume or whatever. So that's how you would use a flex sensor. Here's the flex sensor set up in Arduino software in the serial monitor. So that we just looked at the voltage changing on the multimeter, but now you can see that the numbers in the serial monitor are changing as I flex. Okay. So that tells us that it's working. We've got a minimum number of about 530 and then a maximum number of 820 something. So this could be used for an application. So there's the Arduino. Here's the breadboard. And here's the flex sensor. Here's the Arduino code. I adapted it from a um, I adapted it from one of the examples analog input. So you can see in the source code, I just made a few modifications, but all it's going to do is take the input from the flex sensor. Okay. So I've got sensor pin is A0. So on the Arduino, pin A0 is taking the yellow wire from the breadboard. And we've got a variable called sensor value. So in setup, we just begin the serial and the sensor value is getting a method called analog read sensor pin. So sensor pin is A0, it's just reading what comes in on A0. And then serial.print line, we're gonna output the uh, sensor value there. And we put a delay of 300 in here because then it slows down the speed with which you can see it in the, the monitor. Okay, so if we look at the serial monitor, got the numbers coming in, and as I bend the flex sensor, you can see the numbers are changing. So if I just hold it, it's got numbers around 530, something like that. If I bend it, I'm going up to about 830. So that's my range, the minimum number to the maximum number. And if we wanted to write an application, it would just be a matter of, you know, writing code that would do different things to map that number range into different numbers that we want to use, depending on what you want to change. So if you wanted to output a sound, the sound channel might take, you know, a certain range of numbers that we could output. So that's how you get the data from the DIY sensor into Arduino, into an, uh, a variable that you can use in an application. Okay.